Good morning, beautiful sisters. Oh. Happy Wednesday. I am feeling so <laughs> slow in my body right now. I am utterly exhausted, but it's a beautiful exhaustion and I am honoring that. I've been away from home for four or five days, just doing four nights in a row of events. And it has been so much fun, but it is definitely exhausting. I've been driving all over Southeast Queensland and then having these massive nights and it's a lot of energy to be in connection. And I think I've, I've spoken all the words, all the words. <laughs> My dad used to always say, you only have a certain amount of words and then you die. And I feel like, I've used up most of them. No, but my cup is so full and my heart is so full. And now for the next two days, I'm just gonna be honoring my relaxation. And um, yeah, before another busy weekend of women's events, I'm gonna spend the next two days in the garden and just doing not much. But chatting here to you beautiful women. So today's offering, I have felt really called and I, I always have wanted to use this as one of my topics of conversation um, and I guess after having the last four days doing naked women's events and speaking about this um, to the women has really made me realize that it's something I want to share right here right now with you and I want to talk about body hair I want to talk about female body hair and explain to you and share with you my journey with my body hair and then also a little bit of the history around the razor a lot of women you know our generations and anyone who's over 18 and on this page was probably born into a world where sh women shaving was completely normal so we don't really even second guess these things do we it's just the norm and so we just go along with it so i want to share with you the history of the razor and it started with Gillette so Gillette the razor company um, back in the early early 1900s there was only razors for men women didn't have to shave they weren't even it wasn't even a consideration in their minds back then you know we were wearing Victorian era clothing with you know the women had Neck, necks up to here and long sleeves and dresses that dragged on the ground and and boots and I mean I feel sorry for them the ones that lived in Australia <laughs> and how hot they would have been but they didn't show much of their body so it wasn't even a second guess you know Gillette created razors for men because of their beards and when the men went off into to war in the early 1900s Gillette created like a special razor for the men to have in their little war kits so they could shave and you know the men were all away the women were just at home and the sales for Gillette were obviously not their regular they weren't having their regular income because most of the men were away and it was also in like around 1915 the first women's razor was advertised and shared because around that time, women's clothing started to change from that Victorian era and become a little, a little bit more skin was shown. So the first ad that came out for women's razor, it is just like Gillette is so smart in the way that they marketed this in the one little ad they gave women the problem and the solution and it was to make us feel embarrassed of our body hair and feel like if we didn't start shaving our armpit hairs that we would be out of trend because that's what started to happening the clothes started going from long sleeves to um, you know there was still shoulder coverage but it was like sheer material or um, you know a little bit more flowy so the armpit hair could be seen so Gillette fucking brilliant you know, advertisers and marketers that they are said, all right, now we can get the other 50% of the population buying our product instead of just men, because men are just going off to war. 
And so that was it, 1915, the first razor was invented for us. And I've actually got a little picture here of the newspaper article that I wanna share with you. If I can get all my cords around. Let's see if you can, if you can see this. So it's just, it's, I'll, I'll read the little paragraph to you. So it's called The Unique Gift for Women, The Happy Thought in Gifts, Me Lady Decolette Gillette. <laughs> a gift that is new, unique, very much up to date, a beautiful addition to Milady's toilet table and one that solves an embarrassing personal problem. Milady Decolette Gillette is welcomed by women everywhere now that a feature of good dressing and good grooming is to keep the underarm white and smooth. So in that one little paragraph, they've given you the problem. They've said that it's, in, it's an embarrassing personal problem. And then they've given you the solution of now buying this product, shaving so you are white and smooth. Like, there's so much wrong in that, right? But whatever, that was it. That was the beginning. That was the first ad, the first announcement of women having razors, and that was in 1915. So go on now, let's go to 1920. A couple of years of it being in the, the papers and women shaving their armpits. Like flapper era has started, and dresses are getting shorter, sleeves are basically, you know, going. And in that time, women loved magazines. All the housewives, stay-at-home moms, you know, would just flick through the magazines and just be roped in to any advertising that was ever in there. And so 66% of ads at that point in time were now talking about shaving. And now instead of just armpit, it was 66% of ads was talking about also removing leg hair because the dresses were getting shorter. So here we go again, next level. Let's go forward another bit. 1940, World War II. There was a shortage of nylon so that women couldn't wear their stockings all the time, which back then women wore them all the time. So more reason to shave your legs. Also introduced now, um, hair removal cream came out. Easier than shaving, you know, more convenient and then also the the first women's electric razor again quicker don't have to spend as much time you know cost more money that was 1940 let's go 1950 it started to become the norm women were shaving armpits had been doing for a couple of decades leg hair was now being shaved because dresses are getting shorter and more skin was being shown and they started to really promote shaving and hairlessness as classy and feminine. So then they started to play on the shame around femininity and having body hair. All right, good on you, fucking hell. <laughs> All right, that was 1950, let's go to 1960. Shaving is completely normal now. Of course, in the 60s, you had your hippies, right? Woodstock, the people that didn't care about body hair, but by then, 1915 was when the first razor was sold to women and we're in the 60s now. It is pretty much normal. At another 20 years, 1980, shaving is now sexy. So if you don't shave, you're not sexy. You shave because it's more appealing to men. You shave because you won't find love. You won't be accepted if you have body hair. It's a masculine thing, not a feminine thing. This is just in the 80s. Like, it doesn't really feel like that long ago. Let's go to the 90s and the noughties. So I was born in 1990. So 1990 to 2000 and early 2000s is when they started to... I don't want to use those words. They started announcing that bikini lines should be shaved. So that's where that started. So that was my era. I was, what was it, 2000 and maybe 13 or 14 or 15 is when I first shaved. So I was in that era where my first shaving experience was like 
you go armpits, legs, pussy, like the whole deal. That was what was normal in my high school and my, my experience of shaving. And let's go to 2010. And it's just what we do. It's just what we do now. And it's now 2020 and it's just what we do now. It's just what women do. It is normal. And there's this thing called the pink tax. And that is that women's razors or even just like personal hygiene um, products cost more than men's, even though it's fundamentally the same product. And it's called the pink tax. Why? What the F? Because now they have trained us over so many generations to live this way that there is so much shame and stigma around female body hair that they know that we will buy it regardless of how expensive it is because we can't live without it. So it's just like, I mean, marketing is the devil. <laughs> it's the fucking devil. So that was from 1915 to 2010, right? They built their multi multi-million dollar business on fear on shame on loneliness and on sex all those women in you know playboy in the 80s they started to be completely shaved and it was just that was the epitome of sexy was to be bald everywhere now i feel like body hair is kind of making a little bit of a comeback and that might just be because of my um my love of having natural body hair and maybe that's the community that i'm kind of in so if you're having a different experience like if you don't know anyone who has completely natural body hair i'd love to know because I, I feel like there is more of a comeback of natural a la natural and even you know um not wearing bras and not wearing makeup um, not just the body hair, but the whole natural kind of thing is is coming back around, which is exciting. I love that. I love that because I I love when I see someone who is comfortable in their skin just the way they are. That to me is just is beautiful. And there is no right or wrong in this topic and in this conversation. I just love to share information. Um, on what I've been learning and then also share my story so it's your body it's your choice just like my body my choice and for so long I didn't believe I had a choice and you know now I have found that place where I completely respect and honor that it is my choice and I'm living in that so I want to share with you my my story my story with uh, coming to a very happy and comfortable place where I am just completely natural all the time, everywhere. So it started in high school as most girls journeys with their bodies does. Maybe even earlier, if that was your experience. I was, I was quite a late bloomer. But in high school, I was severely bullied um, for many reasons. But one of them was body hair. I remember swimming class, getting in my togs, like I, early high school, I was never a popular, popular kid anyway. So I was usually the one that was bullied. And so swimming class, standing there, you know, all the girls who are, you know, starting to develop and I'm just, you know, in my, still my childhood body with my, my little chub and no curves. And I had a couple of armpit hairs, like maybe three or four, but you know, they were probably a little bit long and you know, as they normally are when that, you know, that stuff starts coming puberty and I was just I was I was bullied I was severely bullied and I had leg hair like every person in the world has at any age has leg hair and it's just this blonde beautiful soft leg hair and I get completely torn to shreds for it I remember one of the one comment that has always stuck in my mind was that um, something about Skippy the bush kangaroo can run around in my leg hair. It's like something along those lines. From just a, a young boy, doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. But that just, it broke me. And I remember going home crying to mum about it. And I can't remember how long it took me to, to pluck up the courage to do it. But I was like, all right, mum, I want you to shave my legs. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't even do it myself. I was, I think I was quite scared of a razor. I mean, it's blades 
you know, that can chop your skin. <laughs> so mum did it for me. It's having a shower. Mum shaved my legs for me for the first time. And I remember running around the house so in awe, like rubbing my legs together and just being like, this is so smooth and going to bed that night and just laying in bed and my legs, oh my God, rubbing my legs together. And it was such a funny, a funny moment. And you know what's, what's happened now with those like hundred years of razors being pushed into our lives as normal and as necessary is that it's become a part of womanhood. Like shaving your body for the first time has become like an initiation into womanhood. It's like, what? Like that just, that baffles me. That baffles me. Like I reckon we should do that for our menstrual cycles, the first period we ever get. That should be an initiation and a ritual. But also there's so much stigma and shame around that. We'll talk about that on another another video. But anyway, I remember running around the house and I was so excited and... Of course, I went back to school and I was still bullied. Maybe not around leg hair anymore or those three armpit hairs I had, but there was always something that I was bullied on. So then I started shaving and it became part of my life. And it didn't start from a choice that I made for my body. It started from a place of shame because I now associated my body hair to shame. Men weren't going to like me if I was hairy. I was going to get picked on. I was going to get bullied. I was going to get those looks. And so that's really fucking sad um, that that then started to me from that place. And it continued on from that place. I never really enjoyed shaving. I've got really sensitive skin, so I would always get ingrown hairs. And then, as most of you know, if you shave your pussy with a razor and then you have sex, you end up getting like rashes and like it's it's not a comfortable thing to do. But I did it for like 12 years and it was only for men. I thought that if I wasn't smooth, then they wouldn't want to be with me. They wouldn't find me sexy or attractive or appealing. And so I just kept shaving, kept shaving, ingrown hairs, rashes. That was it. But I, I got to a point where I was 25 years old. My relationship ended at that point. And I, that was when my shift into my journey to spirituality and to true self-acceptance and to just figuring out who I was at my core started. And it was in that journey after that relationship ended, I thought, you know what, I'm going to be single for a while and I'm going to just let my body be what I want it to be and just connect with it on that level without having to worry if someone else is going to enjoy it or not. And yeah, I was single for a while, like not in a relationship. I was still dating and having sexual experiences in my now natural body. And so I wanna, I wanna share with you the process of this. The first thing that I stopped shaving was my legs. That was the easiest thing for me to shop, stop shaving because I'm very lucky and blessed that I've got very thin, blonde leg hairs. So that was easy. I, I, you know, I wore long pants and long skirts for quite a while until I even got used to the fact that the leg hair was there. Um, and no guy ever said anything. All the guys that I was, um, you know, casually seeing or whatever, never were like, "Ugh, gross leg hair. I don't want to be with you." So those, that stigma started to get broken down. Those walls started to come down. I was realizing that what I believed to be true for so fucking long was just bullshit. Because it came from immaturity. It came from misinformation. You know, boys in high school who don't even know. But, you know, in that time you are so vulnerable and gullible and you cling on to it. So anyway, stop shaving my legs. That was going great. Then I started, stop shaving my pussy. That was different. <laughs> um, again, I feel like I'm quite lucky in the sense that I don't have like, um, not, I don't even want to use the word lucky because whatever you got, you're lucky to have. I, in my mind, I love the way that my pussy hair grows. It is beautiful and full and it, <laughs> bit too much information, but my bikini line only grows on one side. 
it only grows down the inside of my right leg a little bit and not on the left. So I've always got, if I'm wearing my togs, there's always hair coming out the right side of my bikinis and not the left. So that's a little, little quirky. But again, that was one that when I was dating men, um, I would, I would always warn them. See, I still held shame around my body hair. And as if, you know, we were messaging or maybe like we met in a club and we kissed that night or whatever, and we exchanged numbers and we were organizing to meet up again. That might lead to an intimate time or yeah. And I would always message them and say, oh, I just want to let you know that, um, like I don't shave and yeah, I just thought I'd let you know now. So I was still carrying a lot of shame around it trying to please them, feeling like I had to warn them so they could then say, oh, no, thank you. I don't like that. But this was all my journey. It, it took me time to, to fight those old wounds, that old trauma, the shit that I'd been carrying around for all those years. And every time I said that to a guy, they were like, so? <laughs> and? Like, whatever. That's fine. And I was just like, oh, my God. Oh, my fucking God. They really don't care. Like, I'm, they're going to have sex with an amazing, beautiful woman. I don't care if there's a bit of hair there. Like, <laughs> And so the journey kept going, kept going, kept going. And I have to admit to you, the last thing I stopped shaving was my armpit hair. And that was the hardest part for me to stop shaving. Leg hair can be covered. Your pussy is pretty much always covered unless you're having sex with someone. Um, well, in my experience, it was back then. That was before I was a nude yoga teacher and naturist and all that. But then armpit hair, especially in summer and going to the beach and everything, I would wear, t I started wearing t-shirts all the time and not wearing singlets. And when it was just too hot or I was at the beach, I just would not lift my arms up. I just consciously keep my arms down by my side so no one can see. But then, you know, I let my armpit hairs grow out to their preferred length, like wherever they stop growing. And, you know, it pokes out the front a little bit. And people would notice and I the looks I was getting from people and and even in my family it took a long time for members of my family to get used to seeing me with full body hair my armpit hair and you know and their responses to it was also I never no, I never took it to heart I would always laugh it off but deep down, you want, you want the support of your family, first and foremost. And I realized, and I feel very lucky that within myself I saw this, I never took their responses to my body hair choice to heart or let it affect me. But what I saw was obviously a projection of their own insecurities around body hair. And the males in my family you know, possibly hearing hearing them say words of, oh, you know, you won't find a partner with body hair like that or oh, it's not attractive. And the women in my family just going, why would you want to do that? Oh, it's so uncomfortable. But to me, my journey to self-love was a journey to finding my authenticity. And my way of accessing my true self-acceptance was to live in the true body that I believe I am meant to live in. And for me, that's a completely natural body. And that's gonna look different for everybody. So this does not have to be what you do, right? This is just what I did. And it took me a long time to then be so comfortable that I could now walk into a yoga class with a room full of strangers and teach yoga in the nude, arms up in the air, Everyone being able to see my armpits, my yoni hair, and just fucking own it. And I love, love that I have actually had the full process from being bullied to my mum shaving my legs for the first time, for me doing it then for validation and acceptance for 10 plus years, to then fucking having enough and taking a stand and then going through all of the shame that I then associated to my body hair and overcoming it. And it's, it's like a 15 plus year journey. But now I want to be able to share that with other people because it is your choice. If you love shaving, do it. 
if you don't like it and you're just doing it for external reason, reasons, don't do it. You will find your place and it, it's, yeah, your body, your choice, sisters. And so I really, really hope that in sharing this information with you, that you maybe now have some support or some encouragement on if you are looking to journey and to stop shaving. Um, maybe you've got a friend or a family member that doesn't shave and you can use them as support. I I know that my, my dearest, dearest sister in the whole world, my cousin, um, she stopped shaving before I did. And she was definitely a rock for me in my journey because she she was ahead of me on the journey and still like she was going through all of her own um, hang-ups and insecurities around it and finding her place and now her and I both have not shaved in well over five six years and we are the only ones in in our family that that do this but we're both so comfortable with it and it's now normal I can be around my family completely naked or in my bikinis and they won't even second glance at my armpit hair. So it is a journey and I want to be here to support you if you are one of those women out there who have been doing it for all the wrong reasons, not for yourself, and you want to start journeying, journeying into loving your body hair. So I would love for you to let me know in the comments what your relationship has been like to your body hair maybe why you started shaving, what was your experience of it, why do you do it now, have you ever tried to stop shaving and just to like see how you feel. It definitely takes getting used to feeling the hair when you're not used to feeling it, letting your leg hairs grow out past spiky and same with you know your pussy and your armpit hairs but then once it becomes its normal length, natural length, and it's so soft and it's easy. Yeah I'd really really love to hear your your experiences with this and your stories so please in the comments let me know how your journey has been if you're watching this as a replay then please hashtag replay and yeah your comments mean the world to me i'd love to i love chatting about this stuff so yeah i hope you've enjoyed this the you know brief history of the razor and why it was created for us and then my story I hope it resonated with you. I hope you've got some insight and some support. Always. I'm always here to support you. So beautiful sisters, thank you again so much. I will see you very, very soon. And if you've got other women in your life that you know would enjoy this group and the many topics that we talk about, then please invite them in. Get them to fill out the security questions so I can verify them. And then we can keep building this sisterhood. Mm, so much love to you all and please always remember your body your choice sit down with yourself and have a think if you are doing something for somebody else based around your body then maybe you shouldn't be doing it the things we do for our body are for our own benefit and for our own happiness so please remember that and i love you bye <laughs>